we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started this video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. This is episode 51. I want to thank you very much for listening and I hope this is an inspirational video for you and audio. I um, want to talk about, you can find Easy Street on Good Talk Radio every day. Uh, we are a half hour show and uh, we're featured on Spreaker and syndicated on Good Talk Radio. Uh, we are also sponsored by the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags that you saw below. And anytime we can get a donation or people purchasing our, our hats or our poopy bags helps the station, helps uh, everything we do. And we appreciate it very much. All the links to the different locations and the products we have are in the description below. <laughs> so today's video is about young adults prepping, um, homesteading, things like that. And so what I want to talk about is recently I've watched, uh, because, you know, I was starting to study a little more about uh, my gardening and learning about uh, uh, my green beans I'm growing, the potatoes I want to do this fall. Uh, we have uh, oh, <laughs> zucchini. <laughs> the video before this on the same channel shows you my invasion of zucchini. Um, we're also doing uh, some other kinds of foods, strawberries and things like that. And so what's motivated us is, is obviously life is not the same anymore. Our grocery store in Phoenix here is getting pathetic. Meat is getting low. Certain things are lower. Actually finally seeing some toilet paper products, things like that. And uh, uh, I think and I know uh, within six months to a year, this is nothing compared to what we're going to see. And if the stock markets bite the bit bullet, um, then we're going to see something even more shocking. Um, and uh, one is really bad inflation, shortages, <clears throat> uh, unemployment, things like that. I know it sounds kind of bleak, but um, I'm referring to the depression days and what we could learn from that. Will we have a depression? Not sure. Recession for sure, uh, re depression possibly, but some of the indicators or some of the things that happened during the depression can or our history um, we can learn from. And so what I'm really impressed with lately is I'm caught a lot of channels of young, young and and, and middle-aged homesteaders. They'll call their places homesteading. And what they're doing is they're being very, um, uh, going back to basics, where they're buying property, they're getting out of the cities and learning to be self-sufficient. And it's amazing. And then so I'm watching videos that they're doing that they're saying, uh, talking about their grandparents and what they went through in the depression days. And I'm seeing this time and time again. And then what they're doing is they're going back on history and learning how did they get by when they were unemployed and times were tough and they had to feed a family. And a lot of them are taking the time to learn what their grandmothers taught them or what their mothers could tell them about their grandmothers or grandfathers of how they survived um, during hard times. And a lot of times if they had a little bit of property, it'd be growing or raising a lot of their own food. And so uh, uh, you guys have heard me talk time and time again about being self-sufficient and maybe uh, supplementing your grocery bills or things you can't get as readily in the grocery store that maybe you could do yourself. Uh, here in Arizona, I've proven that even with the high temperatures we have here, our growing seasons are quite unique in what we can grow. Now, what's really impressive is seeing these young adults and uh, uh, you've always heard me teasing about these crazy young adults. These are kids or young adults that are taking a step back, realizing that our old history of uh, United States and how we 
did things back then were not so bad after all. But then when you add today's technologies um, and ideas and tools um, could actually be more efficient. Uh, one of the things that are really big back in the old uh, depression days, well, a couple of things was um, potatoes were amazing. Um, They're easy to grow and could keep long. And, and, and even some of these people are like, how did they deal with not, not having refrigeration and things like that? So the other thing is a lot of young adults or, uh, or homesteaders are learning how to pickle and can their food that they do raise. And uh, uh, at the same time, the more that they do that, the less they have to go to the grocery stores and the less income they have to make because they're being more self-sufficient. So maybe they do work, but only part-time, or maybe they're doing um, virtual work and things like that. So it's a combination of homesteading with high-tech internet available to them so they can actually still work. And then there's a lot of homesteaders that are still learning how to grow things and resell them like uh, uh, plant starters and meat and eggs and things like that. And it's amazing to see these young people taking a step back, learning history, learning techniques, and in, in some cases, improving those techniques with today's technology. Uh, building greenhouses, um, making them uh, how to keep them warm using solar and uh, different processes and taking a combination of old history to new generation of homesteading. And so it's a, a really good thing to see <clears throat> and maybe a lifestyle change for all of us. Now, some of my shows, I've told you that, hey, you may live in the city. You may have an apartment, but there's different ways of growing things that you can do in small spaces. Um, there's uh, growing right off your porch. You can uh, grow things in five gallon buckets. They now have tiered uh, growing um, platforms that you could put right on your porch and actually grow your own strawberries or green beans and things like that. And a lot of times you don't have to get complex plants. Uh, green beans and sugar peas and, and uh, strawberries and things like that are actually fairly easy to grow. And uh, you can utilize the indoors um, using technology or different kind of lighting systems to grow things indoors. One of the big things that are really popular, especially if you have kids, is growing microgreens, uh, which you can do inside your house and actually have a productive crop within seven days. And uh, it's amazing what you can do with some of this stuff. But my point being is we may be forced to do stuff like this. And then you'll find that it's actually a bartering tool for things you might want that someone else has that, hey, let's say you've mastered the art of growing tomatoes. Well, you'd be surprised how many people might trade uh, uh, work, trade uh, uh, handyman work or things like that for a bag of tomatoes or some or some of your green beans and stuff. Um, food is going to become a commodity like money. And and, and you you say, well, no, Rob, you can't. but I ask you, maybe you see this video six months later and then you're going to go, wow. <laughs> I really think I'm right. I really do think that learning how to be more sufficient. I'm seeing younger people moving out from the cities and actually getting a little bit of property, whether it's an acre or more, and doing things to be more self-sufficient, like creating gardens and maybe getting some chickens. Maybe they don't get a cow or a pig or anything like that. but. <laughs> They may barter with other folks that do have pigs and chickens and, and cows and maybe even do a co-op with somebody else that has cows. And, and basically what you do is you buy into the cost of the cow and the butchering. And then really you don't even have to see the cow. And actually when they say the cow's been butchered, go pick up your quarter, go pick up your half, go pick up your whole uh, beef 
at the butcher that's already cut up and it'll be hundreds of pounds of meat that you put in your freezer. It helps the farmer, helps you. As long as you have a freezer, you're set to go. That's one step above folks in the depression days. Didn't necessarily have freezers. And learning how to can, how to dry things, you can be more self-sufficient. Yes, the cost up front would cost more than normal, but once you have the equipment, once you have the jars, once you have that stuff in a good pantry or a good place to store your food, you can start reducing what you buy at the grocery stores or raising things that you cannot get at the grocery stores anymore. And that's amazing. And a lot of young people or um, when I say young, let's say 50 and below, um, are realizing that they want to be more self-sufficient. So if times are tough, they will already have the supplies. Now, believe it or not, you're seeing a green screen. Behind my green screen is an entire shelf of just supplies. And when this shortage on toilet paper and things like that, which I've told you before, hit, we were already prepared and already had it. We didn't have a shortage here. And certain little things like we couldn't get flour one week, but we have extra flour in storage. Um, we couldn't get sugar one week because we were doing more baking. We had sugar. Um, <clears throat> pasta. Um, now, a lot of times when we buy this stuff, we'll prepare it differently. We'll take it out of the containers, put them in jars and, and um, vacuum seal them so they last longer. Like flour it doesn't last a really long time. However, if you take it out, put it in the jars and vacuum seal it, seal it your flour has a much longer shelf life. So anyway, um, this pi picture is actually, uh, I believe, supposed to kind of reflect the uh, depression days when uh, things seem really tough. But really what happened is a lot of people describe those days as, yes, it was hard to live. Times were tough. But we worked hard and survived and it was actually some of the most precious time of their lives of learning how to be self-sufficient. Uh, whether they're in a road or whether they still have a house to live in or the family uh, work together to create food um, to uh, take care of livestock. Um, my son recently just bought an acre and a half and uh, is actually uh, worked really hard to create his first garden and uh, actually has chickens already. And, uh, and within six months, they're going to start having their own eggs. Um, and some of their chickens, um, once they are not efficient at laying eggs anymore, can actually be food. Uh, you go, oh, that's terrible. Well, face it, people, you're just not seeing at the butchers how that food, how that meat gets to the butcher in the first place. There's a process before that. It's called farming. And uh, uh, it's a reality. My kids, I raised them up. Of, uh, actually, I had a game bird farm for quite a while. And my kids have seen the realities of catching fish, cleaning fish, um, raising birds, raising turkeys. We had all that stuff and butchering and going through the process. And so they realize where their food comes from. And if they need to or decide to try to be self-sufficient again, they know how to do it. And one of my kids have actually taken those few steps back and actually bought property and actually are making things more self-sufficient. And even when they're building their pens and doing their gardens, they're finding uh, uh, the things that make their trellises out and their chicken pens out of scrap materials and scrap um, things that they actually got for free. And then they work with other neighbors that maybe they needed a roller tiller. And uh, in return, he does uh, internet stuff. And they help each other and one will loan them a, a equipment to be able to do what he needs to do um, and also share their talents with people that want things that they do it's all bartering and i think you're going to see a lot more of that and it's going to require um, having resources like that learning how to work with your community learning how to trade and 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 communicate with each other maybe you grow potatoes 
where your neighbor grows zucchinis and you trade. And so they do a whole bunch of zucchinis. They have too much. They give it to you. You have too many to potatoes. You give it to them and, and, and not go to the grocery store. Besides the grocery store might not even have those things anymore. Uh, find someone who actually has their own dairy cows that are making their own uh, butter and cheese and trade them for something that you have or learned how to grow that they don't, they want. See how that works? That's how things worked back then. Cooperation, uh, resources, um, getting a little property, getting away from the city. But if you can't get away from the city, there is things you could do. Get fresh vegetables, learn to work with uh, uh, farmers markets, um, work with the community and, and you know, you'll find resources that you can keep that pantry full, even in tough times. And I'm not talking about food banks. However, there's a lot of people that grow a lot of food and get extra of things and they take them to the food bank. Then you're helping the community in another way. Except it's kind of one sided. There's just people just taking, which is okay. But what we want to learn is how to be sufficient. So you don't have to go to food banks and things like that. Grow your own food. I think it's a wonderful thing and a nice change to see uh, young adults doing. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments of what you have made change. Well, have you made any changes and has the reality of this stuff, um, uh, uh, hit you? Have you changed maybe where you live? Are you thinking about going out to the outside of the cities and, and finding a, a little bit of property? Even if it's a half acre, you'd be amazed what you could do with a half acre. Are you thinking about that kind of stuff or have you made those changes? Tell us about it. And I'd love to, if you'd like to be interviewed by us, I would love to interview someone who's recently responded to what life has changed so much what are they doing to take action not bitch and rant but take action to make their lives better support their families learn to live off the land and not let society dictate whether you're happy or sad please in the comments let's hear about it Tell people what you've done. Tell people what actions and accountability you've taken to overcome these new issues and learn from history. YouTube is wonderful to show us history. Go look up the depressions and find out how people survived back then and see what you can do. Food for thought. After years of research and countless hours of R&D work, teams were assembled, research was presented, and the idea was put out to the public. If this could be done, the world would be amazed. Outdoor life would be changed forever. Hiking, vacation, and camping would never be the same. They got the work, they started designing, they made the product, and it's here today just for you. Yes, Ranger Rob poopy bags are finally here. They're bigger, deeper, smell like lemon, and strong. Available at Amazon at low cost and free shipping. Alrighty guys, we are back. Reminder, please go to Amazon, go check out the Ranger Rob poopy bags, or go to Good Talk Radio and check our donation button. Maybe throw a little money towards the, our, uh, our uh, platforms. Uh, it's not just the show, but uh, the radio station and all the things we do. We really appreciate it. So my uh, next thing I wanted to talk about was an observation I had. So Sherry and I just got back from Central Oregon, which is uh, about 1,200 miles from here from Arizona. It's in Oregon and it's on the east side towards Bend, Oregon for those people that know it. And we spent a good almost three, two and a half weeks, almost three week, weeks there to uh, somewhere. Um, and um, we used to live there, so we have a lot of acquaintances and stuff. So we spent a lot of time. Uh, we had to we were helping take care of a house up there. And uh, we had to go to the store a lot. We had to go to uh, 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 hardware stores and 
feed stores and and uh, drove around a little bit and stuff and it was kind of interesting and, and this is about the covid stuff and uh so before i go on and people don't play a video here one little subject and stop playing it and, and it's like please hear me out all the way through but um so in the smaller towns and in and, and more rural area um we're finding, you know, there's still people being cautious, which is good, especially if they're susceptible to uh, this, um, uh, they call it a, 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 the new terminology from CGC is a bad flu. And, uh, you know, if you're older, uh, if you have conditions already, things like that, um, yes, you need to be cautious. And, and I don't, uh, don't refrain from the things that they're telling you to do, like wash your hands and wear gloves and wear masks and things like that. But a mask is actually better for someone who is feeling uh, ill and trying not to get it to other people. Um, there's lots of research saying that the masks are not necessarily good for you. Um, now, in a smaller town like Bend, Oregon, and things like that, we noticed that a lot of people were living normal. Uh, a lot of them were, uh, I, and a lot of people I dealt with, I had to get some work done on a roof and stuff. They're still shaking hands. They do ask, um, but it was so nice to be human again. Um, the human body, and that's what I'm talking about here. I'm no expert. I'm not telling you anything. This was just observations. The human body, by the way, is an amazing thing. It's designed to take in germs and bacteria and things like that and learn how to cope with it. And when we're in lockdown and we're separate, uh, staying in one place, not being exposed to all the normal things out there that are good, bad, or indifferent, our bodies cannot adapt. And the COVID is another one of those things that um, our bodies need to learn how to fight. I think they call it herd mentality type thing. Um, Anyway, so what I was noticing is a lot more uh, homegrown kind of locals kind of like that going, if I get it, I get it. And I'll let my body learn how to fight it. And if I meant to go, I meant to go. It was kind of that mentality. And some of you folks would go, well, that's stupid. Is it really? Hanging out in your house 24 seven playing Nintendo games? trying to keep the kids entertained or not going to school, not going to work and watching the economy go to down the toilet. Is that stupid? I'm just saying is analyze yourself. If you're a strong, healthy person, get out there and live. Um, jogging like this picture behind me, jogging out in the park on a sunny day with a mask on is a little ridiculous. Um, in my opinion, that's his opinion. That's all. Um, read what the doctors are saying about masks, the pros and cons. Read about, <laughs> it's like, here's a, here's a couple of stories. So I, in the Safeway here in Arizona, um, they wear masks and, um, you know, and we get our normal um, grocery bags, which are the plastic ones. And um, uh, we don't, you don't have to pay for the bags or anything like that. And life goes on and, and, you're t and yet uh, all the stuff I put in the conveyor belt, I touch and they touch. They're not, they don't wear gloves there. And uh, uh, most people are surviving and living just fine. So I go to a safe way up in Oregon. And I'm in the line and the lady goes, do you want bags? And I'm like, yeah, duh. <laughs> and she, and she and laughed at me. She goes, oh, you have to buy your bags or did you bring your own? I was like, no, of course not. I've just got here and I'm just here for a couple of weeks. So I guess I have to buy bags. So whatever you need to charge me for bags, go for it. I guess Oregon passed some new laws to get away from the plastic bags. So there's two kinds. You can buy the cloth or you can buy a heavy duty plastic. That's supposed to be able to break down, I guess, or anyway, but, um, so I bought the bags and I felt, and I actually held on to my bags so I could reuse them again. So two weeks or a week and a half later, we go to that same Safeway grocery store and I hand them 
I put on the conveyor belt my my bags so they could bag my stuff and I wouldn't have to buy bags again. And she goes, oh, we can't touch those. You'll have to bag your own. I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't touch those. You've touched them already. Okay. So we use the bags. We give her the bags. No, she hands the stuff down. Sherry puts them in the bags. But my first question to her was, everything on that conveyor belt, me and Sherry touched. And you're picking them up and then moving, scanning them and putting in on the side so Sherry can bag the stuff. And it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> so you've touched everything I've touched already. They're not wearing gloves, but they're wearing masks. And she just shakes her head and he goes, it's policy. <laughs> she was a really nice gal. I go, really? And then after I, uh, luckily, I mean, uh, when I went to ring it up, uh, luckily I have one of those cards where you can just touch the screen and it does a transaction. Or you put it in there, it's a chip, and then you put in your code, which everybody else has touched. And he's like, guys, I think this is getting a little ridiculous, don't you think? And, you know, uh, businesses are, because of all these strange rules, you can have all these people in Walmart or Safeway, but you can't go to a movie theater or you can't go to church and things like that. I think we're, there's a little stupidity going on around here because you can't, you have to stand behind a shield, yet you got to still hand money to each other. Folks, we are living normal doing stupid things <laughs> and our body knows how to deal with this kind of stuff. We cannot be germophobics all of our lives. How did our pioneers ever make it and get their hands dirty? You need to question this stuff. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Ask yourself, really? Is this really realistic? We need to let go. We need to let our bodies that God gave us that can handle this stuff and learn how to process it and learn how to uh, protect us. And you're not going to learn how to protect yourselves if you're wearing gloves and masks all the time. Our children are just hopelessly going to be sick all the time because we won't let them get dirty. It's something to think about. Please think about it. And <laughs> when you can get rid of that mask and breathe the air and touch things and yes, wash your hands and still do common sense things, but don't be ridiculous and, and do more homework and go see the CDC has already said the death count is way lower than they said it was before. The CDC, go to the website and look. They changed it. Yet we destroyed people's lives and livelihoods and their businesses and our farms. Now we got food shortages. Did we overreact? Well, guys, we're getting to the end of our show. I want to thank you very much for listening. And I hope you listen to the whole show so you got the pros and cons. We're not just one sided here. Love to hear your comments. Please take the time to get some Ranger on poopy bags or maybe donate to the uh, Good, Good Talk Radio. Help uh, help the station, help the channel. We appreciate it. Guys, be safe out there. Um, please give us your um, feedback. And um, don't forget you can hear this show on Spreaker and on Good Talk Radio. Please be safe out there. And may we all get through this in one piece and quickly. Let's move on. Let's live. Thanks for listening and bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.